What do you think Democrats need to do this time around to, to win? Well, I think, number one, we have to be able to recognize that there are people who either didn't vote or voted for President Trump that did so because they were fed up with the system. They felt like nobody was listening to them. They were just fed up with the political process. We need an authentic voice, somebody who can be true to themselves, but will speak to the concerns and the anxieties that people in Michigan feel. The reason I think that President Trump was able to get some of those voters is that he told them he was going to shake things up, that the system had failed them, and that he was going to change that. But if people voted for him, is it a progressive candidate or is it a moderate candidate that's going to bring those people back? You know, I think it's less about ideology as it is about authenticity. Because mm -hmm. people, generally speaking, people who are involved in politics are more ideolog ideological. The people who are just living here trying to live out their lives, they're not as concerned about left, right, or center as they are whether we're going forward or backward. We know that he won by just over 10,000 votes, but 242,919 votes went to people other than Donald Trump right. or Hillary Clinton. Or to nobody at all. Right. But yeah. I mean, there were names, not just Jill Stein, that I hadn't even heard of that got thousands of votes, right. one of which uh, could have tilted the election at just one person himself. For sure. How, are you worried about that third party vote in Michigan? Yeah, I'm worried about it in the sense that uh, we went through this before. And in fact, of the near quarter of a million, nearly quarter of a million people who didn't vote for either of the major party candidates, almost 100,000 of them just left, left their presidential ballot blank. Mm -hmm. The thing we have to be looking at is, well, what drove that? Mm -hmm. it was, I think it was the sense that people believed that neither of the candidates you know, fit their interest. For independent voters or Democrats who flip to, who f see themselves as more moderate, yes, you're saying that it's not about ideolo ideology, but some people have turned on the debates and seen some very, very progressive opinions. Do you think that that could damage your party in the general election? I mean, I think we have to be careful about you know, what we present as the set of solutions. And I think very often in a primary season, there is a tendency in both parties to play to the, to the base and to try to carve out you know, the 15 or 20 percent that it takes in a 10-way race or whatever the number is to, to emerge. We have to be careful about it, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm really committed to the, to the sense that I get on the ground that it's really less about, like, the core ideology. So does your party need to drive home messages like jobs and infrastructure and the economy or things like immigration? Or can you walk and chew gum at the same time and still attract all different kinds of voters. I think we have to be able to, to address the broad range of issues and not exclude anyone. Like in other words, if there is, and there obviously is, a big debate about immigration, we also have to have a debate about drinking water, about roads and bridges, about pensions, about wages, about all those aspects of people's lives that they really worry about when they're sitting around the kitchen table, number one. And then we also have to be sophisticated enough to understand that the debate about immigration is a debate about our economy. It's hurting our economy that we haven't been able to get serious and do comprehensive immigration reform. To deal with border security, which we obviously have to do, but also to deal with the needs of our businesses and our employers to continue to refresh and renew. Uh, in Michigan, for example, we're being hurt because we don't have immigration policy that is matched with our needs, with the needs of our economy here. Have you had anyone reach out to you to talk about Flint, about whether it be the water or just about jobs or anything else? For sure. Yeah, I would say at least half the candidates uh, have had some interaction with. Some of them I talk to all the time, but some have reached out specifically to talk about Flint. Some, many of them have come here and, and asked for my thoughts before they arrive in Flint. How do you make sure, though, that Flint isn't just a campaign stop and that this is really something that somebody's going to pay attention to when they're in office? That's really the issue. Uh, that's what I raise. Uh, basically what I say, don't use us as a backdrop for a photo op. Um, if you're coming to Flint, you got to do a couple things. One, listen to the people here. Don't tell them about the crisis. Don't tell them that you feel sympathy, even though we appreciate the sympathy. We're about done with that. What we need are specific solutions. So what we're asking for people to do, for candidates, 
is to speak to how they're going to solve the problem here and prevent it from happening somewhere else and to be as clear and specific as they possibly can be. So you're working with Senator Harris. You have multiple friends who are running, former roommates right. who are running for president right now. What's that been like to kind of look at all of those people and know them personally and try to come to a decision? Yeah, it's different. Uh, I mean, this is the first time I've gone through a presidential election cycle where I really have a personal relationship with a lot of the people that are running. But knowing them personally, it is a, it's a little odd. It's a little weird. Because, you know, um, growing up and sort of following politics, when we see people running for president, you think of them in a different way. Now I see these folks running and, you know, I know them. And, you know, it's not fair to them, but it's sometimes kind of hard to imagine, you know, somebody that I know so well being president of the United States.